Why does social inequality exist? Why does it look different depending on where you live in society and what access to resources you have? Is it structural? Is it something that has to do with you individually? Does it have to do with how society is set up? So today we're gonna to consider social inequality and what are some of those factors that describe why social inequality exists. Why does social inequality exist? A number of people want to blame people individually for why they are poor. That the social interactionist perspective looks at it from the individual perspective and it really looks at and what you see a lot of theorists who are in this, uh, who think about poverty this way, suggest that poverty is a result from la laziness or lack of motivation. And we see a lot of those attitudes and the way people think about that in, in society. And what they do is they blame the poor for the situation that they, they're in and they suggest that somehow people just don't want things and that people don't want to get better or people don't want to go to school or people don't want to have money. And uh, that perspective really, really is an individualistic explanation because it assumes that the reason why you're poor is because of your own personal choice. And many people believe that if you're rich or if you're willing to work hard, then uh, you're able to, then you won't be poor. And so that's why this, this whole individualistic explanation of why people are poor is just one way of thinking about the problems that the poor face, but it really, really blames the victim for the situation that they're in. And it doesn't really take into account the totality of what that looks like, because uh, your motivation is only part of, of what makes up you because you also live in a society. The other way of thinking about social inequality, and again, from the interactionist perspective, um, they uh, this perspective also likes to look at culture. And they like to suggest that culture is part of this explanation as to why people are poor. This explanation is really based on uh, biology and uh, just factors which people claim that because of the group that you're in, and if and if if certain cultures maybe are not as interested in doing better as in other cultures, and they suggest this whole culture of poverty, which argues that people who are in certain groups um, experience uh, more uh, deprivation and extended periods of poverty, and at that point they may be more likely to continue to live in, in poverty. And that's a cultural explanation that says that because of the culture that you live in, that you're more likely to live in poverty. Um, and again, it somehow wants to, it somehow wants to suggest that it has something to do with you as opposed to structural explanations, which really look at how society is functions. So, uh, Functionalism and conflict perspective are both perspectives which think about how society is organized and how that organization plays a part in what you're able to do as a person who lives in that society. And when we think about poverty, poverty is the result of a number of economic and social ec imbalances, which means that one, how the system is set up and what kind of access you have to resources and power to change your situation and how that impacts you. When you think about the United States, the economic change has been characterized by um, decreased purchasing power of minimum wage, which means that even though you get paid more money, it's still not enough money to purchase housing, not enough money to purchase food, not enough to purchase the things that you need. And we also see that there's been a lot of movement from jobs from inner cities to suburbs, to overseas. A lot of those multinational corporations make all their products overseas and ship them to us, which means that we pay more money for those items. But now people don't have manufacturing jobs, which used to really, really help families uh, be middle class. And then we also see that there is a lot of racism and sexism in the marketplace, which means that people don't have the same access to, to jobs and opportunities. And there's a dual labor market. So all the way around, uh, opportunities are not equal. And that also plays a part into why social stratification exists. So, uh, you know, there are a number of theories that also add to this discussion of why the stratification exists and what does it look like. The functions and the conflict views are both, uh, again, uh, views that are macro views of society and they look at how society is organized. The functions view 
wants to know uh, who receives the most, wants to look at resources. And they say, and again, this whole view, and we're going to talk about that more when we talk about the Davidson Moore theory, but it really, really looks at and it suggests that those who perform the least functions in society make the less money. Those who perform the most functions in society make the most money. And so part of just this whole context of why does social inequality exist, well, it exists to make sure that people are able to, uh, that all the jobs that society needs to be completed are done by the most capable people. Um, the conflict view, on the other hand, says that, and again, it's responding to the question of is stratification universal, meaning does it happen everywhere? The conflict view says that the people who have the most power and the people who have the most money are those who are in the most powerful positions. And why are they in the most powerful positions? Because they're the ones that make the laws and continue to have laws that support their position in society. And um, this is how uh, society is organized. And so it is universal in that sense. And part of just this whole Davis and Moore theory, which again suggests that it is, again, this is a, a functionalist theory. And it suggests that if you have a society that's organized in a way where resources are allocated to those who have the most talent, then, uh, then that is functional. And it says that basically this theory says that stratification is inevitable because some positions are more important than others. And that's why they get paid more money. And what Davis and Moore suggests is that the more important positions have to be filled by people who are most qualified. That's why brain surgeons get paid more money than uh, those who wait tables. Right. And so part of this whole theory suggests that the greater rewards are needed to motivate more qualified people to fulfill those positions. Because if you didn't, if you were, why would you go to medical school and become a brain surgeon if you were only going to make $20,000 a year? As this theory would suggest that part of the motivation for people to assume to go to school longer time periods is that one, it, it now gives you more incentive to do that because you are going to be reimbursed and the benefit of that will be greater. Then if you don't go to school when you take a job that doesn't require anything. And that's the Davis and Moore theory. And again, this is a functionalist theory, which really says that social inequality is functional for society because if you didn't um, require certain things, then people wouldn't choose to do other jobs. Now, one critique of this whole view of motivating qualified people is that it it doesn't, it it, it assumes that everybody has the same everyone starts at the same place. And that's not true. We've been talking about social inequality, that it exists because of how society is set up. Some people are born into poverty. That's what life chances mean. And the problem with this whole functions view is that it assumes that everyone starts at the same starting point when that's actually really not the case. Everyone doesn't start at the same starting point. And it also assumes that people won't want to pursue jobs that require more education um, if they don't pay more. And so that's not also not necessarily tr true. So um, because our society is not equal because those who are rich have more opportunities than those who are poor, we see that the functionalist theory, although in certain ways you can see why um, social inequality could be functional, we can also see why it serves to reinforce the status quo. And it's part of Marx's argument of, of class conflict. You know, Marx is a conflict theorist and he said, again, his perspective is just the way society is organized. And because society is organized with people have scarce resources, people are now fighting for those resources, that the reason why we have social inequality is that those who are at the top continue to form laws and support things that continue their lives the way that they are and they don't allow for people who don't have money and resources to be able to also um, compete in that system. So when you think about just social inequality and what that looks like, um, you know, solutions to poverty and what it and what social inequality looks like has everything to do with how you see people. And one views 
your view on these issues have a lot to do with your opinions about the government and how you see the poor and what can happen. So when you think about just American society, it is not, it is not equal. It is not organized in a way that people have equal access to opportunities. And regardless of what your opportunities are, while you can be motivated, um, your motivation um, is not enough. You have to also have opportunities so that you can actually use your motivation to get more. And, and that's the part about social inequality that's extremely important to understand that all of the theories, the, the conflict theory, the functionalist theory, which both talk about how society is organized, is just as important as thinking about who you are in that system, in that social system of social stratification and what opportunities you have available to you.